Hello, beautiful souls. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name is Carolyn, and this channel is all about true crime, mystery, and anything abnormal. I highly recommend subscribing because this channel is definitely a vibe. On June 29th, 2003, two best friends are walking around Manchester. There is John, who is 14 years old, and Mark, who is 16 years old. The two boys are best friends and they're just casually walking around Manchester. The two boys decide to walk down an alleyway known as Goose Green. 20 minutes later, 16 year old Mark comes running out of the alleyway, yelling, trying to get people's attention and asking someone to call for an ambulance. And this is one of the most bizarre, wild, almost unbelievable stories that I've ever heard. When police and EMTs arrive, they find John on the ground in Goose Green alleyway. He's been stabbed twice, once in the chest and once in the stomach. John is rushed to the hospital. He has two pretty severe stab wounds. He has to get his gallbladder removed and he's definitely in very critical condition at this point. Police are questioning Mark at the scene, asking him what happened. Mark says that the attacker just came out of nowhere, stabbed John two times, and then ran off in the opposite direction. Immediately, police are suspicious because the direction that Mark said the intruder had run ended with a 40-foot drop-off. So police know it would have been impossible for the attacker to run in the direction that Mark was telling them. Police are suspicious of Mark, but they're also thinking this is a 14 year old kid who's just witnessed his best friend get stabbed two times. So he may be confusing the details. He may be still in shock. It's probably a really overwhelming situation he's in. So the police decide, let's take a look at the CCTV footage that's available. There's no CCTV footage in the alleyway. So there's no actual CCTV footage of the actual stabbing taking place. But there is footage showing who enters the alleyway and who exits the alleyway. So when police watch the footage, the only two people they see entering the alley is Mark and John. They see the two of them enter the alleyway and then they don't see anyone come in or out of that alleyway for 25 minutes. 25 minutes after the two boys entered the alleyway, they see Mark running out of the alleyway in going to look for help. And police are very upfront with Mark and say, there was no one else in that alleyway. No one else came in or out of that alleyway while the two of you were in there. We have the footage. It's what you're telling us is not true. So at this point, John is stable enough for the police to go and question him. Now, when they question John, John confirms the story that Mark has told them, that it was an unknown attacker that had stabbed him. Police are baffled because both boys are telling the exact same story, but based off the footage that they've watched, they know that no one else was in that alleyway. So they continue and continue talking to John, telling John, you know, the story doesn't make sense. We've watched the footage. There was no one else in that alleyway with you. And eventually John admits to the police that it was Mark who stabbed him. And this is where the story goes absolutely insane, completely insane. So the first thing to know is Mark and John are not these boys' real names. The courts decided to protect the identity of both of these boys. So we know that their ages were 14 and 16. We don't know their name and we obviously don't know um, what they look like or who they are. 
So Mark is arrested and he's not talking. He's not telling police anything. So to understand what happened, we've got to go back about six months. So it's 2003 and at this time when you would go on the internet, the most common thing people would do is go in chat rooms. And if you're not old enough to have been around when there was chat rooms, chat rooms are basically just a chat room where, I mean, there could be two people in the chat room, there could be 200 people in the chat room, and people just message, it's like a constant message where anybody can say anything they want. And if you want to have a private conversation with anyone in the chat, you click on their username and then you can have an individual conversation that the rest of the room wouldn't see. So there's no profiles. There's no profile pictures. Everyone simply goes by a username. And obviously you can make that username whatever you want. So first we have John, who is the 16 year old, who is the one that got stabbed. He grew up and had a very difficult childhood. He didn't have the best home life. He was bullied and teased a lot by his classmates. He didn't have a lot of friends and he was very socially awkward. So the internet was a great place for him to escape. And in police interviews later on, John said that he felt like he was unlovable that no one would ever care about him. And he basically felt like it was impossible for anyone to care about him. He was also very obsessed with these chat rooms. He would spend all day and all night in these chat rooms. He would tell police later that at one point he stopped eating because he was so focused on being in these chat rooms. So in one of these chat rooms is where John and Mark meet. Mark, who is 16, had had a pretty average life. There's not a lot known about them because their identities are protected. And he loved the internet as well. And he loved going in chat rooms. So John and Mark meet online in one of these chat rooms and they become really, really close friends. Now, this may start to get a little confusing because there's a number of different people involved in this story. So I'm just going to go through each person. So there's obviously Mark and John. John's the one that was stabbed. Mark is the one who stabbed him. Then you have Rachel, who is John's sister. Now, Mark and John had met in real life before. They talked online for a little while and they had so much in common, they wanted to meet. So they had actually met in person. So then there is Rachel, who is John's sister. John's sister, Rachel, and Mark start talking, but they never have met in real life. And there's a lot of chatting that goes on between them. But basically, Rachel convinces Mark to turn on his webcam. She has her webcam off, so she never shows who she is. But she asks Mark to turn on his camera and do sexual acts so that she can sit and watch him. And Mark, believing that he's talking to a young girl his age, who he is very interested in, does this. So then there's a man named Kevin who comes into the story. Kevin joins the chat room and he's communicating with Mark as well. Now Kevin says that he is an older gay man who has a foot fetish and he brags about being a stalker. He talks about how he's a stalker and he's so proud of it and he just seems kind of like a violent, creepy person. So Rachel and John, who are supposedly brother and sister, start telling Mark that Kevin is stalking them in real life. So Kevin starts threatening Mark that he's going to kill Rachel. Kevin tells Mark that he wants him to turn on his webcam, 
do sexual acts that Kevin can watch. And if he does this, Kevin will not kill Rachel. So Mark, again, turns on his webcam. The person at the other end, who supposedly is Kevin, doesn't have his on, performs sexual acts that supposedly Kevin can watch. And then Rachel disappears. <laughs> So the all of these people would talk in these chat rooms almost on a daily basis. Like they were in constant communication. And all of a sudden, Rachel just isn't there anymore. And as you can probably tell at this point, these people are not real. And I know it's probably getting kind of confusing because there's six characters all created by one person. So all of these people are the exact same person. But Mark genuinely believes these are six separate people. So then he gets told by Kevin that Kevin killed Rachel. So Mark doesn't just have some man online telling him he killed some woman online. He has who he believes is her brother confirming that she has been murdered. And then... A month or so passes and Rachel comes back. She's back in the chat and Mark is like, what is going on? I thought that you were murdered. Rachel then tells Mark that she was kidnapped, not murdered. She was in a coma. And while she was in a coma, she had given birth to Mark's baby. Now, Mark and Rachel have never met. So obviously Mark knows she didn't have my baby because we've never had sex. So Mark starts to become very suspicious at this point and it took him a while to get suspicious, but all of a sudden then Rachel just disappears. Rachel doesn't come in the chat. She doesn't respond to emails. Like Rachel just apparently disappears. Then, and this is the last person that's gonna join the story because I know this is getting confusing. So then Janet enters the chat and she becomes part of this group and they're all messaging each other. And she develops very close um, relationship with Mark. Nothing sexual at all. She's just, she's a woman in her forties. She works for MI6 and she's married, she has kids. And when she's talking to Mark, she's not being sexual in any way. She's just having kind of normal conversations. And Janet starts telling Mark that she thinks he would make a really great spy. And this 16 year old kid is like, woohoo, sign me up. I want to be a spy. And she is continuously telling him he has to do all of these tests. And all of the tests involve him doing something sexual. So I'll just let you know at this point, none of these people are real. The only two people that are real are Mark and John. John is the one that was stabbed. He is the one who has created these six other characters. So he is posing as Janet telling Mark you need to do these certain tasks so that you can be initiated and then you'll be part of a spy for the British government. He tells him he's going to meet the queen. And it's just like, I don't know how this kid fell for all of this. And I don't know how this other kid came up with this elaborate story. But this is what happens. <laughs> So Janet starts telling Mark, who he still believes Janet is really a spy and he's doing these secret tasks to become a spy as well. One of his tasks is she tells Mark that he has to convince people that John is gay. And how he is supposed to go about doing this is for him to convince John to participate in sexual acts with Mark. 
And Mark is so excited. He wants to be a spy and he's believing every single word of this. So him and John meet up. They end up watching porn together, giving each other blowies. And now Mark feels like he has completed his task. So then Mark gets an email from Janet saying, you're in. You are now a British spy. You work for the British government. And ta-da, we've hired you even though you're 16. Then Janet tells Mark that his first assignment is to kill John. She tells him that John is an evil person, that he's a master criminal. I mean, the kid's 14, so I don't know. Like, I don't know. The whole thing's insane because this, this is all coming out of the mind of a 14-year-old boy. And the 16-year-old boy is believing all of this. And now the boy who's orchestrating the whole thing is convincing the other boy to kill him. Janet is telling Mark that John has done all of these evil things and that he's a very dangerous man and he needs to be killed. She also tells him if he kills John, he'll get 80 million pounds and he'll be, go up a rank in his spy world. And Mark is like, this is my best friend. Like, you want me to kill my best friend? This is kind of weird. And he's he doesn't want to do it. He obviously doesn't want to murder his best friend. And then Janet says, well, you don't know this, but John, he has a brain tumor and he's dying and he's going to die a really slow, painful death. So you'd actually be helping him if you were to kill him. And then Mark agrees that he will do it. So that's everything to do with all of the online world. What is happening is John has now organized his own murder. He has now convinced Mark to kill him. And John is serious. So that was everything that led up to June 29th when the stabbing happened. And the police go through, I think it was something like 58,000 lines of text from emails, this chat room between these six people, John being one of them, and Mark. And the police are reading through this story that I just told you and I've simplified it as much as I possibly can. And they're like, what in the hell is going on? John organizes his own murder and he goes through with it. Like John specifically told Mark, get a knife, take him to the alley, stab him twice. He explains to him where to stab him. John, I mean, Mark is getting this, all this information from Janet, but it really is Mark. Mark is saying the, when you stab him, you need to say, I love you as you're stabbing him. So John goes into the alleyway knowing that he's going to be stabbed and seems like his goal is for him to get killed. So Mark had obviously already been arrested. And then six months after the event, they arrested John for inciting murder. And he was the first person in the UK ever to be charged with inciting their own murder. So John ends up pleading guilty to inciting a murder and perverting the course of justice. So in pleading guilty, John was given three years supervision order. So he serves no time in jail. He also has the restriction that he is never allowed to have contact with Mark 
and he's not allowed to use the internet. Mark, he didn't serve any time either. He was found guilty of attempted murder and he had two years of a supervision order. Him as well is not allowed to have any contact with John and he is not allowed to use the internet. And when the judge was sentencing both of the boys, he said that he believed John must have been some kind of genius. The intricate details of creating and maintaining these six different characters with so much detail and so much precision. I really tried to simplify it as much as I could because it's a confusing story to, to tell and I'm sure a confusing story to listen to. But the judge just couldn't believe all of this had just come out of the mind of a 14 year old boy. And we obviously don't know what ended up happening with either of the boys uh, because their identities obviously were protected. So we have no information about that. But I'm really curious. Like, I think John should have become a writer. He could have written an absolutely amazing novel. Like, his character creation was insane into how much detail he could and he had it all going at the same time like he'd be on the computer responding as Rachel and then he'd be responding as Kevin and very seasoned detectives and the judge could not believe that a 14 year old kid was able to do this so that's the end of today's story. I hope it wasn't too confusing. I really tried to tell it in the most uncomplicated way I could, but it's a very complicated story. So I hope you enjoyed it. I really appreciate uh, you watching, liking, commenting, subscribing. You guys are absolutely amazing. The channel's growing faster than I ever could have imagined. And I just really want to say thank you and tell you I really, really appreciate you. And I will see you in the next one.